likes to eat. Um, and one of my friends who is also from the U.S. that went to Nigeria with me, he was just wondering, like, why can't you guys pick up arms and take care of the politicians and do what needs to be done? Well, it's easier said than done, though, because he himself felt the wahala because he was supposed to fly out this morning. But due to the strike, he's stuck in Nigeria now. So it's the country is terrible, man. It's, so, it's really so, uh, yesterday when I was talking about uh, the consequences of bad leadership and those who are in Nigeria got trapped there, now they are wondering why, uh, you know, those who are trapped in Nigeria couldn't really get out there, right? So I was actually speaking yeah. to your pal. Yeah. Not like in the sense that he's supporting, I mean, like somebody who was living in a working space, then this uh, non-working society and they got caught in the whole yeah. uh, thing. So I was speaking to some, yeah, I knew it. See, yeah, all of us go collect like no man, no man. Cause, yeah, because being born in Nigeria obviously looks like a like a poverty sentence. Because you you look at the numbers of Nigerians in the UK, maybe they are up to five hundred thousand in the US, maybe about seven hundred thousand, give or take. But then Lagos itself is sitting about maybe twenty something million people, and you talk to people, you hang out with them, we just see that damn, like people have no chance of making it, and not not to be pessimistic but the, it is it's it's yeah, daunting it's clear and i was hanging out with a friend who's studying geography six years at uni or uni, uni like due to strikes and all that this person is spending about six years in, in college and my take is like you know normally if let's say nigeria made sense everyone can go study what they want to study but if you're not studying accounting finance banking to work in the banks or something that actually pivots you out of Nigeria, let's say medicine or whatnot or computer science, but we are doing some course because you like it in Nigeria, it, does, it just doesn't make any sense. And we talked and talked and it's uh, it's sad. And even the Lagos Calabar Expressway and people are literally debating why they should. It doesn't make sense because if you actually understand geography, once you get past Lagos and on those states, Ogun on those states, you get to Delta, Rivers, acquire bomb everything is all water right so it's like how much are you going to spend building it doesn't even make sense to even construct a road expressway all through that coastal like the creek the mangrove so it's like why are people actually trying to like make sense out of coastal freeway like do you guys have sense at all yeah no one's literally living in the coastal in the water right areas no one's there, lives there. Other you than, need you will yeah. need to call you will need to construct another uh what do you call it uh, about uh, 100, more than 100 kilometers of road to actually go to go to where the people actually live. But yeah, they want to construct we can the hardly maintain road. Third the mainland and we want to, we can hardly maintain third mainland and what, like, even in rivers, there are lots of, like, islands uh -huh. out there. You get to um, acquire Bombay and then Calabar is not even, like, it's further inland, not, like, further inland, like, inland valleys. When you look at the map, Google, Google Earth, you see you just can't make sense out of that. I, I was maybe they were trying to like make another um what's that thing they were is it a, a co Atlantic? That was oh, yeah. just my own take on that. Yeah. And those that they are giving contracts to that, you know, they have history of I don't want to say too much, so I don't get tagged as as a potential, you know, DSS when next I'm going to Nigeria. You don't like that, that Abby. You would love to yeah. your Niger trip coded there. Eh? You don't want that interrupt. Okay. I, I don't so you know what I mean? don't because when I yeah, you have to when I'm at the airport, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I don't want to say too much, but it's I don't know, man. Prayers alone won't really do no, it. Won't, it won't. But thank yeah. you, yeah, yeah. And by the way, um, I, I was fortunate enough to actually speak with um, our auto, and you know, and he's mentioned like he's seen you a few times on YouTube, and he said he'll be happy to you know come to your show and whatnot so i just thought i should share that because i know you're quite busy with what you're doing so you just I want to thank you for the people i know i know i'm still gonna keep uh, i'm gonna keep uh, saying to you that i'm gonna make it happen you've done so much you've done so well enough to keep that uh, line of uh, convo between this platform and himself right and i kind of yeah i appreciate you for that okay but i promise yeah. i will make it happen okay awesome Let's Thank you very much. Have a good night. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Stay safe, man. All right. Have a good one, sir. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, our shift first saw right there uh, in uh, I mean, from the US, so to say. We just returned back from Nigeria.
on a trip. So I do have another caller. Let's take it. Hello. Hello, my good general. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good, and you? Very well, though. Thank you. Yeah, this is Ferdinand calling from Newcastle. Bless you, Ferdinand. That's a Ferdinand from Newcastle. Of yeah. Mine. I like kind of calling that way. How are you today, Baba? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay, my good. Um, first of all, I really want to appreciate you. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Um, for some time now, I've not called because um because of my work. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm off I'm off today. But I've been trying to catch up with the previous one. So I've been watching. I started watching the program since the brunch time yesterday, last night on, and brunch time today and this night on. So I've been following the series. Um, I really want to make a very brief contribution. Um, the last time um, the last time I was watching the program, um, somebody you, when you were um talking about the separation of nigeria um going back to the regional government and uh, you were actually reading some tweets and then you read about one Faras or who who said that um they want to go to regional government because the north is not doing good now that when the north was better than any other region that um the nigeria was sustaining on on agriculture from the north so that really kind of like that really kind of like pissed me off and at the same time got me angry and at the same time i was just laughing because this is the kind of lies and fallacy they've been feeding them in the north there you know yes that is that is making them feel so entitled to any factual backing. exactly none of them have any actual factual backing and like you've been saying nigeria is completely built on lies and People have been sustaining these lies for a very long time that they are beginning to believe their own lies and illusion to be true. So I don't know whoever is listening or whether the Twitter is watching this program or not, but I just want to make it clear that Northern Nigeria has never been in any way and will never be in any way today in the nearest future and forever be better than the southern part of Nigeria in any way. It's not like it's a cause, but it's, it's the truth. It's the truth of the matter. It's obvious that uh, the northern Nigeria was actually set up to fail, okay? By it, it, all uh, yeah. historical parts, all right? Is in, you want to yeah. sure that education is not accessible. That alone is, is that, it's like uh, to tell you, that the southern exactly. Nigeria that was built on education and all of that stuff uh, can yeah. compare with the north. It, it continues this not, way. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to cause it's that. Really but cause. northern Nigeria, North, northern Nigeria was never better than the south from the history of Nigeria, and we never, never. in today and in the nearest future meet up the south in any way. In any way, we are two different people. I'm not saying it with with hatred then but i'm just trying to like state out the truth of the whole matter so that people would begin to realize the truth you get it northern nigeria was never was never good they, never they put us back from independence the they put us back from independence never, yeah never happened never they, they put us back from independent and talking about even the mineral resources they claim that <laughs> uh uh the south we enjoyed because of oil i thought Buarif said he discovered gozani oil were in north well, how come we are not hearing about it because now what so how come uh, <laughs> just the license secret <laughs> uh, they take they take uh, two billion dollars eh? that's part of the looting of nigeria that people need to... oh, quarry, so that's a good seat uh, he's uh, a walking criminal Right. And and nobody nobody is talking about that Konzani oil well, because I remember vividly that happened during the last few months of his tenure. Yeah. You get it? So these are the lies that they feed their people with. And they've become so used to this lie that they are now they beginning believe they to are believe true. their own lie to be true. Mm -hmm. You get it? Yesterday, my yesterday was my birthday. Oh, yesterday okay, was my nice. birthday. Yeah, so I was um, 
Thank you very much. I was um I was in in a restaurant in Newcastle with my guys. I were just talking and just saying and they said, right. "Happy birthday, bro!" You know, we are talking about a lot of things. And I, I looked at my present age, mm. at thirty two, at thirty two. I looked at what I've been able to accomplish within my short stay in the UK. I told you previously when I came to this country, I was 26 years old, feeling like I was a feeling like I was a young boy, not knowing that I'm even an old man compared to what people of 25 have been doing in the UK. They are married, they have houses they've been paying for the past five years on mortgage. Hmm. They have nice Mercedes cars. And I looked at myself and I look at what I've been able to accomplish in the uh couple of years I've been in the UK. My if I was in Nigeria. I wouldn't have gone as far as I've gone now. That is one of the things Nigeria did to me that I will never forgive Nigeria for. Mm. You see, few 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 years ago, I paid my wife's bride price, almost a million naira, my ego. Mm. Almost a million naira. In fact, sixty-five thousand was done to collect list. Now, if you if you if you if you look at it, when I was doing that, I told my dad, look. That we are not helping ourselves, just like one through Emperor and the uh, African Wahala said that we should get rid of traditional uh, institutions like the kings and others. Mm. I will also support that we should get rid of some traditional cultures and and that are making life difficult for us. Mm. How can you expect somebody to pay such a huge amount of bright price when the country is not going anywhere? When when youths, young boys, are not getting any job, they are not yeah, getting money. Job. Hmm. They've they've turned into arm robbers, Yahoo boys. Do you know that almost almost my almost 80% of good looking girls in Nigeria are prostitutes? Or if you go online, you see their profiles. Yeah. They are prostitutes. Girls don't enter it. And then you expect somebody in a difficult economy to cough out one million naira to come and pay bride price. And this is just bride price. You've not you've not even thought about wedding and all that thing. So yeah, for you to pay bride price and yeah. For, yeah, for you to for you to pay bride price and do wedding now as a young boy in your early thirties or mid thirties, you should have not less than four million naira or more. Not how many business, people so for wedding? Not for business for wedding, no, for wedding. No. How many people out there have that kind of money? My, I have friends that are older than me in their forties. They are so not they even are thinking not of getting married. At marriage at all. They, they yeah. are not looking at marriage. They are, look, they are looking of how to feed themselves a day, how to feed themselves very well. Like they are not even looking about marriage. My, these people are forty not years. Even of I, have, down. I have, I have and... people, I have people that are thirty-eight years old that I, I send sixty, fifty, seventy thousand monthly basis so just to feed them. They are not even talking about marriage. marriage. Hmm. You get it. So this is to tell you how far. And destroy, you know, the destruction Nigeria has caused to us. Our, see, Ferdinand, you know, uh, Ferdinand, our parents, uh, eh, if you go back and look at uh, the age that our parents had us, you will realize yeah. that when they were in their 20s, they were in their 30s. Exactly. The oldest were exactly. in their 30s. Hardly would they get to 30 without them having like a one or two. Exactly. Exactly. But here we are today, 30 year old, 35 year old uh young men they are still collecting allowances from their father and parents at home yes i i don't have money to go to that place sir. i don't have money daddy is, have money is, that age. exactly right is, that they are age. not thinking of marriage or anything but you see the girls exactly. the girls eh, like you said now some of the girls who are probably resorting to other ways of uh, uh trying to keep up uh, with the economic uh, wahala right and every yeah. uh, every year you see them at shilo Calling the, I'm telling the head of all these young people to come and marry them. My husband, give me, give me my husband. It, oh, Heavenly Father, give me my husband. Your husband, no day. The economy has denied exactly. people family life. And and hey. uh, yeah, and 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 you see pastors, all these uh, hungry pastors opening prayer house and cashing out of people from their ignorance and the bad economy. You get it? Making them believe somebody is responsible for their misfortune. No, nobody is really actually responsible, you know? Traveling out has really opened my eyes to understand why uh, things have been the way they are. And to those people who feel that you reading that book is... Uh, you doing uh the reading the, the white man is that you have not that 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 person that person is really stupid because stupid. if 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 they should look at your platform if you kind of like if you kind of like read meaning into your platform and kind of like see the reasons why you do this is you're trying not just to liberate Yoruba nation or Nigeria but it's Africa as a whole bless you because 
because the reason why we are here, where we are today is because we are not united. If Pan-African had taken place like Dr. Kwame Nkrumah actually proposed it to be, we wouldn't be where we are today. You get it? So anybody, you have callers from, not just Nigerians that listen to you, Ghanaians and other people listen to you. Yes. you get it? So anybody is feeling that you've run out of content should have his head no, really examined because, I think it's just that, because, that. because that, white, that white man is, I follow it, I follow it. It's, when you read it, sometimes I get so angry and I weep. And I'm like, how did our forefathers become so stupid and manipulated by these people that this dream crashed? Ghana became independent in 1957. Moved for, uh, Dr. Kwame moved for Pan-Africanism. Within the first two years of an attempt to, to kind of like unite Africa, the whole thing crashed. Mm -hmm. And we've not regained ourselves and our unity till date. And it's mm -hmm. affecting us seriously. You get it. So I really thank you for what I've been doing. Oh, Do not be discouraged. You, I love Ferdinand. I love how consistent you've been. I love how consistent thank you've you. been. You know, your your sense of judgment, your impartiality. You. you know, calling red, red, calling black, black and white, white. No matter where yeah, um the true. art is coming from, if not not minding if it is from your region or any part. So just keep up the good ones and don't be discouraged, okay? God thank you very much. Ferdinand, thank you so much, okay? Yeah. And uh, yeah. take care easy, Baba. Enjoy the rest of the week. Okay. So that's a Ferdinand, ladies and gentlemen. I think I have uh, just about 20, less than 20 minutes to go. Usually I would say 10 minutes. However, because we didn't start until uh, 10 minutes after the time, so we can have an extra 10 minutes. So we can say we do have about 15 minutes to go. So I will take this. Hello there. Hello, good evening. Good evening. How are you, Baba? I'm okay. It's been a while. I'm always uh, listening, but uh, I don't call in all the time. So you just have to do that tonight. There must be something <laughs> that you feel like, no, I want to call in tonight. Uh, well, well, I think I, I was uh, moved by Wolo uh, you know, being given uh, is in the street. Uh, so I thought so I have to say something about it. For his working. So tell us, what do you yeah. think? Yeah, uh, I just want to say that uh, I'm not against that, okay? Because I'm, I'm a great proponent of, uh, you know, honoring our acad academians, okay? So, but uh, I, I, I only think that it come at a time when he has just uh, almost, uh, um, how am I going to say, almost destroying his whole, uh, his whole legacy. So uh, I think that is a sad uh, part of it. Otherwise, uh, when you look at Motala Mohammed Airport, you know, uh, you see very names of, I mean, a name of uh, uh, as a uh, military, yeah, who came into, into power through bloodshed, through coup. We see Baba Gida having name of uh, boulevards and all. I, I, if we really want to change things, I think we 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 have to address all those. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I don't I don't understand why people will come um, from our side, arrive in Nigeria, say Mo, Motala Mohammed Airport. They will say, who is this man? It's so shameful for a stranger to say, who is this man? Ask about this man. Who about this airport? Most of them are who, is, who is this man? They will, not, they will not say he was an intellectual. He was someone who helped the country. He was a fighter. No. They will say he was former military uh, dictator. So, uh, but this is a democratic country today. So, but that those names are still there. But back there, they are all doing. So, uh, that is why I say it, it will be better actually that we honor people like Ulusenka, Chino Achebe, and all that people who actually um, made a mark. You know, push Nigeria up there. Um, they are known because of education. And uh, but uh, fortunately, that uh, Ulusenka. Uh, he had just uh, left the legacy that is uh, a little bit he the, the What do you call it? He has blown that privilege. It's only the remnants that's left. Even though the people will tell you it's argumentative to like, it's debatable, but the truth is the truth. A lot of people yeah, who yeah. worshipped him don't see him the same way anymore. Let's be honest. There are many, many people yeah. who don't see him the same way anymore. But yeah, it doesn't exactly. really matter. I don't think it should exactly. problem him off uh, what he actually achieved. Like uh, literally, mm. you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. So that's why I said, uh, yeah, I'm not against that. Only that that he came at a time where he he said he has become so controversial now. That is that's the only problem there. And uh, I don't understand also like if you live in UK right now. I live in France here. Yes. You don't, you never see where um, you know uh, something was built because Tony Blair was the prime minister. So immediately all the things that were built during his time, you have to just name them. He, he don't have power to do that. 
Okay, uh, you never see a boulevard here is Sarkozy or whatever, but uh, always in Nigeria, whenever something is built, uh, one who, who who is the president at that time, he have to just put his name there or look for somebody that he just like or someone that he he, he that is hmm. exactly. So, but I don't know how they name things, you know, because did they have a body that select the uh, because here, like in Europe, like I was trying to say, there are things they will build now. Okay, they will leave it. I said, okay, maybe generations to come will not look around and say, who has done something again now that we have an honor? They have to now name that thing. Look at the Motola Model Airport. If, if, they, if they leave it as Lagos State International Airport for us, it will be okay. It must not bear the name of Motola Mohammed Airport. It's, whenever I hear that name, I'm always angry. <laughs> you know why I don't 